Hello YouTube, it's Doss Gregor, and welcome back to another First Impressions. Today we are going to be looking at Netrunner Enigma 2. Netrunner is a Kubuntu, Debian, Ubuntu flavor, however you want to go with that. It has a lot of neat things to offer and it runs so far very well. In fact, I have been very impressed so far with Netrunner to the point I think I will actually make this my second partition for Linux next to Gen2 as a stable bin distribution to go to when I'm looking to fix problems inside the Gen2 side. The reason I've decided this is because of all the different distributions I've tested so far within the UEFI environment. I believe this one has given me the least amount of trouble, has allowed for the sound to work the best. The 3D acceleration on the video is spot on. No problems using the smart touch screen options on the system. And all the applications that I've looked for have installed nicely. Plus, it seems to be a little bit more game centric and web centric than some of the other things that I've tested. And I kind of like that. And I'll be going over a few of those here in a little bit. First off, to install Netrunner. It was very simple. It did have an ISO, of course, as they all do, that I was able to get on a USB stick and boot from. You know, sometimes when I'm trying to install, I run into issues with using USB, and I really hate to burn a DVD for a one time use, chest it out. I mean, granted, it's much better nowadays that DVDs are only 10 cents, 15 cents, or, or less to purchase, but I would much prefer to have a media that I can just erase and redo without constantly having to find another hard disk to use. One thing I have thought about, and I've seen some tutorials online about it, and that is to create anywhere between a 4.5 to 9 gig partition and set it up so that you can extend the ISO into that partition and then try to boot from it as if it was its own media. That sounds like a great idea and I may look into that someday but for right now being able to use the DD command and just burn it or write it to a USB stick works very well. The live distribution side was easy, very user friendly the, install, uh, blah, blah. the installation went very well. No confusing aspects. I mean, there have been some distributions I've tried that I have not felt very comfortable with the installation. It was not user friendly or it wasn't beginner friendly. I don't ever claim to be an expert on any of these, but it is nice when the installation is pretty straightforward. I mean, my biggest concern is the fact that I've got two hard drives in this laptop. One of them I have completely dedicated so I don't mess anything up with what the system came with with Windows 8. And the second hard drive is a one terabyte which I use for Linux distributions. And of course my first main partition is Gen 2. The second one right now is Linux Mint and the third is my what I call my guest OS. And sometimes I feel a little uncomfortable if it's not very intuitive with the install because I don't want to accidentally screw up one of my partitions, have it wipe the whole hard drive and put it on as if it was expecting that nothing else was there. So I prefer to have an installation that allows me to see what's going on and absolutely double check before it goes. The most important thing when installing to me 
is the partitioning side, especially since I have so many different OS's running concurrently. That went, like I said, very well. I've been in this OS for three or four days now, testing different things out pretty regularly. Um, things have been very smooth. Like I said, the sound quality is great. Once I set up the HDA jack retask, and this was one of those few OS's that when I was done with that, rebooted, it actually kept all the settings, so I don't have to keep redoing it. I'm still fighting with that within my Gen 2 box even. Uh, it came with certain applications like Steam and web accounts, which I thought, well, you know, I don't normally play around with Steam and Linux. I only have it there every once in a while just for seeing how it runs. So I tried it out, and I installed these two games here. This one was a free one called Estranged, and this one here was one I had purchased a while back called The Raven, Legacy of a Master Thief. Both of them work very well, and I'm not using any type of proprietary driver to make those work. Of course, it would be interesting if I tried this in my other laptop, which has an NVIDIA chipset instead of an Intel chipset, because I've been told that in some things you need the proprietary drivers for some of their games, but then again, that might be different depending upon what you're actually downloading. One thing that was also impressive right away with Netrunner was it comes with a great set of applications. If we look down here, it's a very simplistic screen, but I like the theming that they've done here. This is one of the many backgrounds you can choose from, and of course, I installed QD4 to get the simple screen recorder running. Let me get my mug out of the way so it's not distracting y'all. <laughs> get back in there. Um, it came with a lot of games. Uh, I installed a few just to try to test things out. Uh, Scum VM, for instance, I was curious to see how it might work with some of the Scum VM games that I have. And then, of course, it came with all the different KDE style games. Frozen Bubble was one that I had noticed that I remember playing way back when and of course played a little bit again. We move into graphics. I installed some comic book readers just to see how they would work within this OS and they seem to be very good. And of course it came with Image Magic, Gwen View for image viewing, and the GIMP for editing images. The internet it comes of course with Firefox. I think if I was to keep this I would go ahead and put on um, Chromium. I enjoy Chromium. Uh, it's become a, a favorite of mine over the last few distribution reviews. And of course it has Pigeon for Internet Messenger. It did come with Skype. I don't believe I installed that. Thunderbird Mail Client. I installed XChat to work with some IRC stuff that I have going on right now. And it came with Transmission for a BitTorrent Client. In the multimedia section I believe it came with Clementine. I installed, of course, the GUVC view and the HDA Jack retask. Came with Caden Live. I tried out the Netflix desktop, and I'll get to that in just a little bit. It, of course, came with the QMMP music player, and I installed the simple screen recorder. Of course, everything you saw there, VLC included, was default. Came with LibreOffice. And of course your settings and utilities and so forth and so on. And it did have, of course, Synaptics, but it also has the Mulan package manager, which it suggests. Now, I wasn't too familiar with Netrunner, and I liked the fact that I could go into the README section here. And it brought me up to a great section of reading materials, tutorials, etc. Issues about installing it on... UEFI, which is always helpful, although I did all that, and I don't think I followed their tips on that because it says here about using using the uh, non-UEFI with the flash disk, and I'm not sure. I think I used the UEFI, and I've had no problems with it. It's been running very well. You know, a lot of good information right here. Here's where I found, for instance, about installing Netflix. Works great once I follow their little instructions here. This is where I found out about the web accounts and setting them up, which I thought was kind of nifty. I still have to play around a little bit more with their Samba mounter. It's not working properly to my liking, 
I had to manually set that up to get some to some of my uh, networking resources, but that's not a big issue because I'm used to doing everything the manual method way. It is nice, however, sometimes to have more of an automated way that you can just go in there. Now, what's weird is I can go into the network manager there and I can see my network and I can log into it and I can get to my NAS drives but as soon as I try to tell it to map it and create a shortcut to it it gives me an empty folder that doesn't point to anywhere which I find is kind of strange so I just went ahead into the FS tab and added my own entries which I'm used to doing because of Gen 2 but as I was saying here with the readme it brings you to a great location with lots of stuff in their forums, their tutorials, some nifty screenshots, how to download it. And of course, this is built off of 13.12 uh, version, if I didn't mention that before. All in all, like I said, it's been a very stable release. I've been really impressed with it. I like the theming that they've done. I know uh, Jeff Linux Turner recently did a review of this as well and pointed out some very good aspects of this, dif this distribution. And I agree 100%. It has some real nice features. And it's just well done. Everything on, on it has been simple to use, simple to configure, a good little desktop. I may, like I said, go ahead and put this as my second partition and keep it around for a bit just to, to have something to play with outside of Linux Mint. Um, trying to think if there's anything else I'd like to discuss about it, but you know, I think I've caught just about everything that there is good to say about it. There's probably one or two items that I'm missing, but uh, whether it's morning, evening, noon, or night, whatever you're having, enjoy it. Thanks for watching. I'm trying to make some of my videos a slight bit shorter. Sometimes I do know that if I allow myself to talk about other things, I do ramble. I apologize because I know some of you guys are actually watching this for a real review on the distribution and not to hear some of my old stories of the way things used to be in yesterday or and all that sort of good junk. So we'll try to keep it sweet and to the point. Thank you for watching. Thanks for your comments. I do hope you enjoy these reviews. I enjoy making them. I really enjoy talking with you guys about different things. I do hope I can answer some of your questions when you do have them. I don't ever claim to be an expert because I'm learning new things every day about different distributions. And everything is a, is a new adventure, especially with UEFI. I hope I don't sound like you know, like, oh, well, it's me, it's so difficult. UEFI has some weird issues, and I really feel like eventually it'll be a moot point because Linux, as I'm seeing, is doing an excellent job facing it. Some of these distributions that I've looked at, you, you wouldn't even tell that there was an issue at all. You know, they've done such an awesome job. Like Netrunner is one that I give it an A+. Plus for UEFI compatibility, setting up and running in this environment alongside something like Windows 8 or Windows 7 64-bit if that's what you have on your UEFI. Either way. Anyway, thanks again for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. We'll talk to you all later. Bye.